We spent a decent amount of yesterday's program chatting about the presidential debate. Still a lot of blowback and a lot of uh, second day reaction to the debate itself nationally and to our conversation uh, locally as well. And I, I want to play, I, I sent Garzi some sound. I believe this is from the from Jake Tapper and CNN, a segment or at least a portion, a, a brief portion of a segment in which I think the discussion was about what Vice President Harris did and didn't address during the course of um, the Tuesday night debate, right? It was Tuesday night? Yeah, because today's Thursday. Yep. Let's 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 listen to uh, how that played out on CNN yesterday. Vice President Harris began the debate by punting the first question on the economy. Do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid, and I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. It went on from there. Despite the economy being the number one issue facing the country, the sitting vice president generally reverted to talking points about a few of her policy proposals. Even Harris allies today are saying that she needs to talk more about what she will do for Americans if elected. Senator Bernie Sanders will be here in a second to talk about more about the need for her to fill in some of those blanks. On the border, another vulnerable issue for Harris, she also dodged. Would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. Okay, that wasn't the question. When asked how she would break through the Israel-Hamas war stalemate, Harris said this. We need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Okay, but again, how? So here's why I think this fits, dovetails perfectly with what we were discussing yesterday. Because we live in a world of sharks and jets, the assumption tends to be if I say, for example, I believe that it was a blowout victory, uh, debate victory for Vice President Harris yesterday, the question that has come back to me is, <laughs> Well, did you hear what Tapper just laid out, the, that sound? She evaded. There was just a number of questions that she flat out did not answer. We addressed this to a certain degree yesterday. The issue isn't whether she has vulnerabilities. The issue during a debate, and the way I evaluate a debate, is how the opponent effectively attacks those weaknesses. And Donald J. Trump didn't. Until very late, maybe even the closing statement, as we said, that's the issue. She has vulnerabilities. She definitely skated too often, politically speaking, yesterday. But he didn't do anything with it. He did almost nothing with those opportunities. Why? Because she pissed him off. She got to him. She brought up stuff that had nothing to do with actually the question she had been asked either, but the strategy was clear. It was all revealed before the debate even began. They're going to get them. They're going to get them going. They got a plan. They're going to needle them. And they're going to test and we're going to see if, 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 we, if they bring up the crowd size, will he lose it on that? Will he become so consumed with that he'll forget to say, oh, with all due respect, uh, Vice President Harris, although I don't think he ever named her, um, what does this have to do with the question that you were just asked? Nothing. And that tells me that you really don't have an answer to that question. That's how you win the debate, right? Or that's how you, you, you turn it back in your direction. The vulnerabilities exist. He just did nothing with them. And if you are grading a debate, as far as I'm concerned, or you are evaluating debate, I'm not going to judge on what he could have done, what was available to him. I'm going to judge on what he did do. And he didn't do a particularly, I didn't do a particularly good job on uh, on that at all. Um, I mentioned also, uh, I want to try to stay on schedule here for this hour better than I did in hour number one. Um, the Nate Silver, there's a new Nate Silver controversy. We'll, we'll, we'll re-identify for people who don't know who he is, who Nate Silver is, and why 
what's going on with him, and quite frankly, what's going on with one of the CNN investigative team members, go into the classification of why I don't, I don't want to root for the Sharks or the Jets on many, many occasions. Uh, we'll explain that when we come back. There's another bit of sound that I sent to Garzi that, that goes back to the uh, earrings conspiracy theory. And I think there's also an allusion in that uh, sound to um, pet eating that was because, became a big uh, source of conversation. And via Twitter, uh, there was some fascinating uh, pushback on me allegedly offering stone-cold evidence of people in Ohio, well, in this case, one person, capturing and eating a cat, which is worth discussing as well. So we'll try to get into all of that and then prepare for the inbox. That is scheduled for 4.30. I assume the uh, top five at five coming up at the top of the hour will include all of the uh, pep rally Championship parade details for our Minnesota wind chill. Tonight. I'll be kicking it to you for all of those as Tonight. our wind chill correspondent. Well, no. You're supposed to be, you know, varied enough to, it should be part of the top five at five. Don't you think? Out of fairness? Yeah, they did tweet at us to let us know. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good reminder. I meant to wear my wind chill uh, hoodie today and I forgot. It's my. That's on me. I should have. Full pelf? If not today, when? It's a perfect hoodie day, too. The windshield feel it all ripped off by the uh, name of the new U.S., uh, well, not the new, now the championship. The PWHL team? P yeah, WHL team going with the... The Frost. The Frost. That's... It's a good name. It's a good name, yeah, but it's... It's a good name. I mean, it's kind of close, isn't it? Playing off the, the weather, the... Oh, we'll go, they went windshield, we'll go Frost. Just saying. It seems a little derivative to me. It's all about winter around here. Okay. All right. I guess it is. Of course, they won a championship first, though. They did. Did they not? They did win it sequentially, they, yes. They got. They were ahead of the wind chill. Both in their first year of existence and just oh, on well, the calendar. Yeah, that's also That's a very good point, too. Um, okay. So I, I get a... Um, well, how do we describe Nate Silver? Nate Silver is, is a... Um, He's an analytic. He's a political analytics yeah, guy. Yeah, he's like a sabermetrician on steroids exactly. for politics. For politics, for model. You know, he he lays out models that attempt to try to forecast outcomes of elections, right? But he tends to do the old, very analytic. You know, it's like in a, an NFL game. They'll say um, Bears are down seventeen to three late first quarter. They have a twenty six percent chance to come back and beat the Texans on the road, right? Stuff like that. He go, tends to go with Harris has got a 62% chance in this state. And now he updates them constantly. Well, he's under fire uh, from, uh, among others, your gal, Bet Midler. Did you see this? No. <laughs> Bet's been on a bender here on Twitter, by the <laughs> way. I have, I, this is like the one I she's, haven't seen. She's because the, the, the latest models, the latest constructs from Nate Silver were fav more favorable to Don Trump. Than they were to Harris, Bette Midler has lost her mind. And she has attempted to denigrate and even call into question his ethics about whether he's compromised, whether there might be reasons that he's coming up with these conclusions. And people ask all the time, why are you mad at both the Sharks and Jets? I'm mad at them for different reasons at different points, but th this is stupid. Bette Midler is upset for one reason only. She wants and believes that Harris needs to win this race, okay? And you can believe that fervently, but it's not other people's responsibility to live by your credo. It doesn't make them, it doesn't call into question necessarily their ethics, their approach, just because you have no objectivity on the subject. And same thing has happened. I mentioned, is it Kaczynski from CNN Files? He had a, a piece, again, just the other day, He's the guy who had the piece we quoted from on um, uh, the Governor Walls going back to when he first ran for office in Mankato, right? Reminding the, a national audience of the degree to which people on Walls' behalf lied about his DWI incident, okay? People got on him for that. Bette Midler, 
that sort got on him. How dare you? Who do you want to win this thing? And it's happened again. He uncovered a a file. This is Harris some some answers to a questionnaire going back to 2019. It was an ACLU questionnaire that Harris filled out as a candidate for president in 2020, in which, among other things, she expressed support for decriminalizing federal drug possession for personal use, for sweeping reductions to immigration and custom enforcement operations, including drastic cuts in ICE funding and an open-ended pledge to end immigration detention, uh, the other one that got attention was she apparently was in favor of providing gender transition surgery to detained migrants. Uh, by the way, all this, I think, should have been fodder for a question for tougher questioning about uh, to, uh, to Harris during the debate, which we talked about yesterday. We did not run from that subject at all. But now Kaczynski is, is under fire. What, what are you trying to do? How dare you? He's doing journalism. You can decide whether whatever you think of her answers, whether they disturb you less, as much, or more than the constant revelations related to Trump and who's running with him, Vance? J.D. Uh, Vance. Vance, right? That's not his job. But there's too many, in this case, we're obviously talking about Jets, who are pissed off at people like Nate Silver, and in this case a CNN investigative reporter for doing the work, the reportage that's necessary because they've decided it's us versus them and you're either on one side or the other. He's not making stuff up. This is how she answered. Now, is it got to be how damaging it is? Is it depends on how you feel about, you know, again, the relative strengths and weaknesses. But the idea that he has to be that he should be held in some kind of contempt. He needs to explain himself. Whose side is he on? I'll say again, that's part of the reason we're as screwed up politically as we are. That even individuals who are doing... if The, the comeback, of course, is you're doing the wrong journalism. Why didn't you do this other journalism? You say, well, maybe that other journalism has been done. But right now, what you are trying to put together for a candidate who barely existed on the political radar two months ago, literally two months ago, maybe three, whatever it is. I'm not good at the math. What do we know about her? There's a lot we, we're we trying to figure out. Nobody voted for her. So the idea that he's attempting to, to answer some of these questions or follow stories and, and, and that the, 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 the fact that the bet middlers of the world can't handle it. And think that like something bad should happen or how dare you do it. How does that help us? All that does is create even greater poli- you know, uh, polarization. And the other side feels like, well, now we are emboldened. We're, we're going we're gonna to come right back at you the same way because reporters doing reporting. This is a sad statement in America in 2024. Now have to explain themselves for doing so. What are your bona fides? What are you after here? What do they pay you? All that stuff, right? I mean, in all seriousness, I, I, I can't I, I can't tell you how much I despise it. I I can't stand listening to it, and I can't stand the 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? The justification for it, because there is no justification other other than well, I don't want their guy to win, right? Right? That's it. That's the only justification. Yes. You're hurting like, our guy's chances. Right. And it's, yes. it's, other people are not obligated to look at things the same way you do in the positions that they, the, the jobs that they do. I mean, Nate Silver is not perfect. He's not a perfect prognosticator, but I think most people will say he's pretty serious about his job, right? He's viewed among those who pay attention to these sorts of things as a guy who uh, takes his best shot at it. He's not the last word. Um, there, there. I'm. Sh- he, he may be wrong as many times as he's right. But the fact of the matter is, go back over history about what he has attempted to do, and I, I know what people want to believe. Well, he's only doing it because of who's funding him, and he, and 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 it's it's the problem with that is you if 
Just because you want to believe it doesn't mean it's true. Because I know your secret. The only reason you want to believe it is because, again, you've got the person you want to win, and you do not want to see the other side get any sort of advantage. That's the reason. That's not good enough for me. It's not good enough, I think, for, I think, really, more people than we realize out there who are so sick of the noise that's out there that's generated by these idiots who have no interest in journalism, zero interest in journalism, or they're only interested in the journalism that furthers the cause of the candidate that they decide must be the one to save the country from the from from the from its destruction, right? And that goes actually for uh, both parties. Doctor Dan's inbox, Doctor Dan's inbox. You say, how are we doing? Are we in good shape? You think? Solid shape. Always looking for more. Okay. Time now for the Vikings report on the fan presented by Miller Lite. Viking safety Cam Bynum joins Barrero next after this from Miller Lite. Yeah. Friday football feast rolls yeah. on the Buffalo Wild Wings. Maplewood tomorrow. Join Paul Allen, Paul Charchi in 9 to noon for great wings and drinks. Tons of football talk. Yeah. Your chance to win great prizes. Doors open at 8. Get all the details. KFAN.com keyword calendar. I'm guessing it's going to be festive. The beauty of, it doesn't matter who you beat. You win your opener. Everybody just got a little more bounce to their step preparing for the home opener. Whether you're playing the 49ers or playing a team that's less capable and accomplished, right? You feel like, why not us? Why not now, right? You lose the opener against the Giants. Yep. Then it's going to be hard, I think, to get. It's, it's still the C, the home opener. I get that, but it, the feel I would think during the feast would be very different for tomorrow. Don't you? Don't you think? Of course, especially it's because be. your quarterback played well. He was yeah, spinning it. He was. He's getting seals of approvals all over the place. Jonesy looks like he's uh, he, he's good enough to be rookie of the year. Like he's that fr- his legs are that fresh. Spry. running back. And you read Seifert's... JJ's just getting started. You read Seifert's piece on Jones. Apparently, they've got like the greatest system ever to keep him fresh. Of course Just they day-to-day do. Day-to-day basis. Of course. Co- collaborative plan. Of course they do. It's unbelievable how aligned we are right now. Yeah. And he's, is he still wearing the sombrero? He does wear the sombrero. That's a big... Now, has he got one sombrero or has he got like a bunch of them? I think, he, I think he's got a bunch, but his was purple, you know, for us. Yeah, of course. So, a lot of drama on does whether he, he's going to he do the Lambo Does he wear the sombrero leap. to every game? I think he does. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, I, can't, maybe, I can't say that for sure. Yeah, I'm sure someone will be working on that for this weekend. Uh, before we get to the uh, inbox, I have to do it. <laughs> I have to. Do you know how to... many letters to the inbox we got from the inbox wondering what time we were actually going to start because of what you talked about? But I go just, ahead. I, I have to. I, I, I can't let it. I... It's remarkable. And it so vividly proves my point, but the individual won't get that. It's Amelia Santanello guy. He thinks he's discovering electricity with this observation. You're missing the story again, Dan. The problem is Harris is your standard order politician, the kind we've seen for decades in this country with normal, quote unquote, normal scandals and normal stories. And Trump is a historical character, maybe the biggest political story in our country's history. And many journalists, yourself included, seem to think it's their job to cover each story the same when the stories aren't 50-50. Trump deserves far more scrutiny than a normal order politician. Any sort of balance seeking in the stories is political malpractice. We have no chance if Amelia Santanello is expressing a sentiment that sadly a lot of people believe in. By any measurable journalistic standard, Donald J. Trump, over the course of his political career, has been, quote-unquote, covered at a rate thousands of times greater when it comes to accountability and scandal. It's not even freaking close. But in his world, if a story about another candidate is brought up just once, you're trying to even the score too much. You're trying to go 50-50. And you can't go 50-50 because this is this man's a monster. Therefore, not just 80% of the stories, not just, well, 
The Atlantic devoted a month or two ago an entire issue to the dangers that Donald J. Trump represents. An entire issue. That's one story too many. They ha it has to be not 90, 80%, 90%. It's got to be 100%. I don't live in your world, Amelia Santanello guy. I don't want to. My position on Trump is clear. I hear from, uh, every day about it from the righties. The, the, the Sharks made it, make it very clear what they think of my position on that. But that doesn't mean every time a story is brought up, I mean, we've got more allegations that Silver's bought and paid for, despite his history of, of, of laying out polls that are favorable to both parties at different times. How about CNN guy? Who paid him off? Why is he getting grief, the, the, the degree of, of, of grief, for just covering a, a, a series of stories as we're trying. Is it so Trump bad? Therefore, we don't even have a right as citizens or journalists to try to gather information on, on, on Kamala Harris. This is insane. And it contributes. He thinks the world has gone mad because of Trump. He's not wrong. But there's another form of madness that he is contributing to. And that an insanity that he is a part of that makes it impossible then on the basis of that logic to have any conversation about whatever the history of, again, an, an individual who had not gotten a single damn vote during the primary process, not one. But in his mind, it's well, you're trying to play 50 50 and 50 50 won't work because did you know this? That Trump was historical, had no idea. Press is, how did the press miss this? How did the New York Times miss it? How did the Washington Post miss it? How did CNN miss it all these years? But apparently they did. Okay, we can start now. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Maybe we should just go back to sports, sports, sports. It's your whole life sports. Maybe it's, anyway. Dear Dr. Dan, I didn't see this one coming, oh by God. the way. This letter. Hadn't heard from this guy in a while. I was run out of town and everyone called me the worst relief pitcher since R. Davis in the early 1980s. A. Gleeman would delight Ooh. in tweeting how my stats were the worst of all time. <laughs> Fast forward to this year, Dr. Dan. I have a three and a half ERA for my new team, the Sea Reds. How's the Twins bullpen doing? Ooh. Oh, not good? Oh. Interesting. Very interesting. By the way, I'm headed to T-Field this weekend. And you'll get to see what you've all been missing. E. Pagan. Is this a fair game even for Dr. Dan to play? Or for anybody to play? When it, Especially when it pertains to bullpen people. We can didn't I ask need you, E. Pagan. Can I ask you a question? Wasn't E. Pagan the guy we used to hate? Yes. Wasn't he the guy that... that Every time the Twins would use them, fans would lose their minds. I would get a text from Twins fans around the country that right. I only would hear from when E. Pagan would pitch. And they would just say, why? Why, why, why? We didn't like him. That's why this letter is hilarious. It is funny. So that's why if, you, if, if, the, if the point of the letter is to make this, is give me, this will give me more fodder and ammo to rip the Twins, there's plenty of the fodder. I mean, we should be ripping Trump, not the twins, of course, because that's false equivalency, right? We, so whatever energy we're going to use to rip the twins, we got to get it back to Trump. Because Lord knows on the on the panel, they were really easy on Trump. The two the two individuals who were asking the questions were it's another example of just that false equivalency that we keep hearing about. Um, I, I, I don't want to use this as an example because everybody was down on him. I don't think anybody did anybody pitch a fit when he left. Nobody. I don't remember anybody did. And as as Dr. Dan has said many times, deciding year to year who's going to be good among relief pitchers and who isn't. My God, I'd hate to have that responsibility because there there are there's often no rhyme or reason to it, right? Other than maybe the top five guys. You say, well, that's why they're the top five guys because year in and year out you can kind of count on them. But how many guys? How many bullpen, particularly relief pitchers? Go, you know, one year good, next year struggle some, next year great, next two years struggle some, gets traded and suddenly he's good again. How, as much as we like to rip general managers, 
How do you even go about beginning to evaluate them? It's very really difficult. Pictures. It's got to be tough. It's very difficult. That's why the really good ones get good deals. It's time for ones. Dr. Ian's Inbox. Don't look in that inbox. Look at this inbox. It's going, going, pagan. Somebody's reminding me of the the uh, going, you know, the, the, the home run call. I do. <laughs> yes. It's going, going, pagan. Dear Dr. Dan, I don't know if you know this, but we lost our first game. I did not play particularly well. Our next four games are against Philly, Kansas City, New Orleans, and Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. What do you think the fans will say if we begin Ooh, oh. our season 0 and 5? Will it matter at all that my wife, Jules, <laughs> is from Georgia? This is Kay Cousins. No, I, I did notice that this week, is it a primetime game? It's They're definitely on the road. They're at Philly. Maybe it's just a regular Sunday start. But... That's in of itself. It's Monday Night Football. Oh, it is. So it is a prime time yes. game. Yeah, you're thinking, ah, that that's that's this is bad. That's why it's sort of like what was the year the Vikings was it against Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay. We opened here with Tampa Bay. Yes. And we we, we messed around with that game. Yep. And it started. I think we started the season zero and three. Yeah. And that, had a hard time recovering. That was from that last point. year, wasn't it? Was that last year? Because then we went to Philly. I don't even remember. Right after but it was a Thursday night. What I do remember is if you're Atlanta, you're going. We got to win that opener at home because we go to Philly prime time, difficult environment. Um, there could be trouble. So yeah, I mean, as we were talking about with S. Salisbury at three thirty, the scary part about this is uh, it can get a it, it. You know how quickly it can kind of. I guess you could say get away from you. Um, and it will... Uh, he said it, it by October, if the if Atlanta continues to struggle, there will be some fans who will begin to clamor, and even some media jackals, who will be clamoring for... Uh, who's the guy they took with the eighth pick overall? Michael Rewind. Penix Jr. M. Penix Jr. I don't think it's going to be October. How many more weeks of September do we have, two? Have, it's only September 12th. We have three more games in September, I basically. think late, by late, it won't be October. If they continue to struggle this week and the next week, already there will be clamoring for M. Penix. That's the danger of picking a quarterback that high when you go out and spend all of the resources that the Atlanta Falcons did on K. Cousins. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Dear Dr. Dan, did we hear S. Salisbury say that Kay Cousins was normally aggressive and not normally tentative? Ooh. Sincerely, S. Diggs, <laughs> A. Thielen, yeah. P. Statements, C. Ponder. Well, it was an interesting way for S. Salisbury to put it. I think he meant relative even to the, the Kay Cousins we saw last year before he got hurt. I think we'll all agree he was more accurate and more assertive and more willing to, you know, plant the foot and zip the ball in. I, I, I'm, I'm not, yeah. Would I put K Cousins at the top of the list historically when it comes to those issues? I wouldn't. But I think he's playing off of even what we saw a year ago. I don't know how much of this is injury or not fully recovered. I don't know how much of it. I think he made, made a good point about quarterbacks who are deemed from doctors, 100% or back capable of playing, it doesn't necessarily mean they're always ready to play, mentally and physically. And it's hard to say how much of the first game was he's not moving, even by his standards, the same, the, the same way he did to even move up in the pocket, or it's he just reverted. He had a really, really bad game, and maybe, maybe the heat's getting to him a little bit. Maybe he even has some regret about ultimately the decision he made to win the gold medal in the transactional Olympics. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. I'm doing pretty good so far, aren't I? You're oh, staying pretty focused. Fairly focused. Yes. They're, they're, they're pouring in and I'm staying focused. I believe that. Top five will be another test. I don't have as much faith in top five. <laughs> probably right. But I'm going to worry about this segment. Yeah. Segment by segment we go on the show. Brick right? by brick. Yeah. Dear Dr. Dan, I've got to get something off my chest. It likely won't shock you at all. I am the most unbiased, fair, and totally objective debate moderator the world has ever seen. I'm so neutral, even my houseplants can't figure out if I'm rooting for them or not. I've been called Switzerland so many times, I'm starting to wonder <laughs> if I should learn to yodel. 
I once tried to moderate a discussion between my two cats, and now neither of them will speak to me. At least to this point, they haven't been eaten. So rest easy, Dr. Dan. Knowing when it comes to fairness, I'm like the Dalai Lama of debate. Minus the robe and with much better hair. Yours is in unshakable, unmistakable, slightly delusional fairness. D. Muir. What's David's name? The moderator. Oh, M- uh, Muir? Muir. Yeah, D. Muir, I think, yeah. Um, I tried to go with all the vowels at well, once. Is there some new uh, conspiracy theory that's been launched? Today about ABC uh, and and the debate, the the questions. I, I I only saw the headline on it. I have to admit, I didn't click on it. Do you are you aware of this? About how Dr. she got Dan- sample questions early. That oh, is one? that? Well, I don't even. I even know. Is that one of them? Is that one of the allegations? That's another headline I saw. What about the earrings? I mean, that's not well, really a new the one. The other sound we're going to use in the five o'clock hours related to the earrings, uh, which is pretty interesting in of itself. Um, yeah, I uh, like I said. I, I, I would I would not. Well, here's what's funny. I think Trump's history with D. Muir is actually good. He even complimented him at one point about something he had covered previously. Um, it, it is Dr. Dan did find it rather amusing that Trump said he dominated the debate, and then on the other hand, he said I got job by the officials. Usually, if you feel like you're job by the officials, it's because you're licking your wounds. But of course, with Trump, it's got to be everything. I got job by the officials, but I still dominated her, even though every self-respecting Republican I've seen quoted. Most recently, did you see what Kay Rove, Carl Rove wrote no, in the Wall Street Journal? I didn't. I was double able compared to his savagery. Isn't he Republican? I think he is. Oh, but he's a rhino. That's, That's right. right. He's a rhino, so it's easy to dismiss what he has to say. Uh, again, I, I think they should have been a little tougher. I think they should have brought up that survey I mentioned. I think that was absolutely, because it was recent, and that was fair game. Um, I don't think, but I also think that every issue that they brought up, I mean, again, boys and girls, in a real world sense, if you bring up eating dogs, eating cats, eating pets, you're on a different, you are on a different plateau, and so there's going to be more attention given to that. Again, much to the chagrin of a lot of Republicans that I've seen quoted to say, what are we doing? What the hell are we doing with the animal stuff? Are we trying to win or are we trying to lose? It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Letters. Oh, we got letters. Dear Dr. Dan, I know we're all beside ourselves with excitement, but I feel it's my duty to make an official statement about the absolute legendary status as one of the greatest Vikings quarterbacks of all time. Sure, we've had names like F. Tarkington, D. Culpepper, even a brief fling with K. Cousins, but let's not kid ourselves. Wasn't that brief? None of them hold a candle to the jaw-dropping, (laughs) mind-blowing, truly earth-shattering career that I've had. Who needs pesky things like playoff wins, Pro Bowls, or even consistent performance when you have potential? I've been riding that wave of he could be good for so long, it's practically a Hall of Fame credential at this point. I mean, we could talk about my time with the Jets, but that would feel unfair. How do you expect anyone to shine in an organization that's not known for any functioning at all? Just ask the new guy. And then there was my stint with the Panthers, who further solidified my reign as the king of something. I've brought a new kind of excitement to the fan base, the kind of excitement that comes with not knowing whether the ball will land in the hands of the wide receiver, (laughs) the defensive back, or somewhere in between. It's thrilling in the same way riding a roller coaster blindfold that is thrilling. Terrifying, disoriented, and full of regret. Forget stats, because who cares about those? I excel in things that really matter, like showing up for games looking pretty decent in purple. When you think about it, those are the qualities of a true franchise QB. Not to mention, I have a franchise favorable contract and both my Achilles are intact. Ooh, that's a cheap shot. Who needs Lombardi trophies when we can have this once-in-a-lifetime level of mediocrity? S. Darnold. Getting cocky after one good week, huh? Well, he is, but he's not. Yeah, I guess that's true. There's some self-deprecating to a fault, you think? It seems like it, yeah. yeah. in a way, I guess it is. Yeah, but it also still seems like he's looking for some attention. Um, well, let's uh, let's make something clear. If S. Darnold plays as well as he did in, let, frankly, the first half of the game, right? Not, not much really happened in the second half from his standpoint. I mean, he was okay, but he wasn't as good as he... But he, the game was in a different, you know... It, it, the, the Vikings were just playing to get the game over with. That's the second true. Half. 
But if he plays as well as he did in the first half of the first game for four weeks, well, let me back up. Probably three weeks, given it's the Niners, and who do you play after the Niners? The Niners, we've got the Texans. The Texans. Then he will be the lead when they do the roundup of who's the early leader in the clubhouse for comeback player of the year. It's going to be S. Darnold at that point, right? That's all it's going to take. I think two more weeks in a row of goodness to greatness. And S. Darnold is in exactly that classification. And you're apologizing for ever suggesting that he's a one-year experiment and I got to see my new guy, my new my new boyfriend, J.J. McCarthy, J.J. McCarthy to start uh, the 2026 season. I may have to. 2025 apologize. season, I should say. Let's do a couple quick ones. It's right. time for Dr. Dan's Not necessarily walk-offs, but they're quick. Okay. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Dear Dr. Dan, earlier this week, national headlines were made about the possibility of folks kidnapping, slaughtering, and potentially eating family cats and dogs in Ohio. While I can't be sure about Why are you the fi- laughing? because it's just still amazing. Yeah. While I can't be sure about the physical traits of these pets, one would think they'd only be targeted because, well, of their girth. I also made headlines years ago by capturing and slaughtering fat cats in order to make a point to a team of weaklings that I was leading. While I didn't go as far as to eat the animals, maybe I would still have a job had I done so. Regardless, I'm wondering if those using such a clear knockoff of my rallying tactics should be punished for trademark infringement. What do you think, Dr. Dan? Do I have a case? Say hi to M. Craig for me. M. Zimmer. Well, I would say to M. Zimmer... Whatever, I mean, right he has to, to any sort of tra- trademark infringement lawsuit, he he would have been better served if he was it, still not coaching. But now he's got a job. He's got a good job, right? And he, he got off to a really good start. His yeah. defense was excellent against the, uh, against the Cleveland Browns in the opener. So I would think at this point, um, M. Zimmer is just going to be so locked in on his particular job that he's going to leave all the animal cheap shots to other people. Dear Dr. Dan, whose side are you on? Is Jay Polad paying you to shame and denigrate the M Twins, big money and injured players, R. Lewis, B. Buxton, and C. Correa? You should be canceled until you share my opinion. That's from B. Midler. B. Midler. Weighing in on the Twins. Okay. Dear Dr. Dan, where did this one go? I don't think I can read that one. I've seen yeah, this one's just mean. Oh. Dear Dr. Dan, you're a great guy and a great American. By pointing out all these non-patriots like B. Midler that are against me for some unknown reason and rail against true <laughs> patriots, you would be a great moderator, Dr. Dan. <laughs> Wait, what did you say yesterday? He said I lost the debate? His show has always been terrible. It's not a good radio show. They're eating dogs and cats in Apple Valley. I heard someone say it on TV. Many people are saying this D-Trump. <laughs> That's well done. Very well played. Is that the walk-off? I think so. Okay, that works for me. Uh, Top five includes injury report update on the purple. And what else? I guess that's it. Injury report update on the twins. Okay, that's, yeah. Even though they don't play today. That's sad but true. And I will find all the information that you need. Let's get some windshield stuff going. About the Minnesota windshield parade. Support it. Are we not aroused by excellence around here?